This is gonna be a difficult video to watch because it involves two lives that were cut short because of a deceptive love story. Two women were caught in a relationship that did not exist, but it managed to take away their entire life savings and also their lives. You wanna know what bothers me, so you wanna talk, let's talk, okay? What the hell are you thinking? Elaine was 76 years old. She lost her husband of 31 years in 2013 and remained single all those years, until September of 2019. Mixed feelings. Yeah. My mom's been uh, alone for a while, but happy for her as well. This guy's name was Mark, and he was an American diver. American, but with a thick African accent. It can happen, unlikely, in these types of cases. You're not sending any money, are you? What did she say to me? Of course not. I wouldn't be that silly. Oh, she knew. And by that time, Richard knew as well. He really tried to persuade his mom from keeping in contact with this clear-cut scammer, but it didn't work. Elaine will go to a specific post office to deposit certain amounts of money, and that happened so regularly that in October of 2020, the post office had to contact the authorities because of unusual activities. We went to see the post officers, and this told us of the out of duty of care that contacted South Yorkshire Police. The customer one was making large amounts, deposits of money to address us. After that, Richard got power of attorney over her cash, but for some reason, Elaine took it back because she was sound minded. Another case of, uh, no, this person is clearly not doing okay and is probably a danger to themselves. Whatever. She got the money back and continued spending it on Mark. I got su such a low point in my life, it was affecting my family my life with with my wife yeah. and my son i had to take a step back again elaine picked mark over her family so richard had to back away from that mess i get she was brainwashed i get the cold tactics but what i don't understand is why they treat their families like garbage it's like a big temper tantrum like a child throwing a fit in the middle of walmart because they want a funko pop but in this case elaine is set on being with mark even though there's a lot of evidence of him being a piece of crap. She doesn't care. Even if she said she knew better. This whole thing left Elaine in poor shape. She was just sat there in a nightdress. Her home was in a particularly bad state and I sat with her and it was just like talking to a blank canvas. She was most likely in a deep depression. She drove away people who were trying to help her. Elaine had nothing left and her health was in such poor conditions she was rushed to the hospital where she died of multiple organ failure. But that did not stop Mark from harassing her. A few minutes of walking into her mom's house, her phone was ringing, there was a gentleman on the other end of the phone asking for Elaine. I said, Elaine's dead, you guys have killed her. Sadly to the scammers, she's just another one, but Richard lost his mom in a heart-wrenching way. They were not that close anymore, she wasn't the same woman, and she was changed for the worst. It created a wedge between mother and son. The scammers don't care about that, they just move on to the next one. The police cannot do anything because there was no robbery. Elaine gave the money willingly, but there's a case here. Yes, she gave the money willingly, but she was lied to. It's called a scam for a reason, right? And not only that, but Elaine was deep into the delusion. Walk into her bedroom and you find a wedding dress which she had bought for her wedding to this guy. Richard goes on telling everyone in the same position as him to support their loved ones, be diligent and don't abandon them. Sure, I agree. That seemed to not work though. Thousands of families have gone through the same and have broken contact with said family member. There's so much you can do but you cannot help someone who doesn't want to be helped. Our sincerest condolences to Richard and his family. This shouldn't have happened, just like in the next story. 57-year-old Laura Cowell was a retired hospital executive who lost her husband due to cancer. Three years later, she was ready to try again. In October of 2018, Laura used Match.com to meet the guy that would change her life forever. Frank was a business guy from Sweden. Laura fell head over heels. An intelligent woman, may I say. But Frank got her good because 12 days later she was saying I love you to this guy. It got creepy really fast and her daughter Kelly was worried. But the next summer she thought the relationship Laura had with Frank dissipated. At least that's what she thought. And I'm calling in regards 
to your mother, Laura Kowal, who may have been involved in a fraud scam as a victim. This was a conversation Kelly had with a detective. She had no idea Frank was still a thing. She went to see Laura immediately for an explanation, but she wasn't there. That was weird because she never goes out without her dog by her side. Kelly called the cops because she couldn't find her mom anywhere. That's when Kelly knew that Frank had never left her mom's shadows. Laura has sent Frank $1.5 million. The police found out the guy from the pictures was a doctor in Chile and the emails were traced to Ghana. Going through her stuff, Kelly found out her mom was involved in some criminal activities. Frank had started teaching Laura how to help him move money. Laura Kowal was now an accomplice, becoming a money mule. There are so many women in prison because of charges like these. They open bank accounts, sometimes in multiple banks. They make sketchy transactions with sketchy people and are most likely located somewhere in Africa. In some cases, they convince the victim to pick up a suitcase to take it to another country. Only that suitcase has drugs in it. The problem is the victim knows exactly what they are doing, except for the drug suitcase. They open bank accounts and make weird transactions and they have to lie to succeed. They know, and that is the problem. Laura went so far as to set up fake dating profiles that ensnared more victims. Ultimately, she was participating in illegal behavior. I wonder what they're thinking. Why they continue with the deception when they could just walk away, block the guy and end the relationship. There's always a way to get about, but it seems there's some indoctrination mixed with ego and a lack of accountability. But still, nothing from Laura, until her daughter found a chilling note made for her. I've been living a double life this past year. It has left me broke and broken. Yes, it involves Frank. I tried to stop this many times, but I knew I would end up dead. And she did. Laura's body was later found. Her death was ruled as drowning. That note left Kelly with a bunch of questions. She thinks her mom was murdered. Laura was in fear for her life on that note. So Kelly has spent years of her life trying to find out what happened to her mom in those last days of her life. The police have no idea who the person behind the profile is and it's a slim chance they will ever get to serve him justice. May Laura rest in peace and her family can find who did this and what really happened to her. These two ladies were a danger to themselves. I don't know why they don't catalog people being brainwashed as potential danger. This is the reason something has to change. There should be a psychological evaluation and it will have to be against the victim's will. They will not understand they are being scammed and will continue as if there's nothing wrong with them. It's harsh, but the methods being used to tackle something like this are definitely not getting any results. What do you think? These two cases are of women who spend their lifetime with their spouses and once they passed away, the widows were left in a dating world that were completely unfamiliar with, saddened by their partner's death and eager to start over. The perfect victims. Leave me your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to join the deception ship. Also, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, it really helps. I hope you had a fantastic day or night and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.